Hello YouTube, and welcome to another episode of Hanging with Janky. Now you may notice that I'm recording from a new location today. Uh, that is because I am recording later than I normally record. Usually, I record on Saturday mornings, before Saturday morning Duger. But today, um, I was... I was tired, so I slept in, and then I was watching Co-Optional Live from PAX East, and then um, I had to go help my dad cut down a tree in the woods so he could cut it apart and we could use it as fuel for the wood stove, because that's where I live. I live where we heat our houses with wood stoves. Good times. Anyway. So I'm recording this evening, which is fine because I usually don't get this uh, video up on YouTube until like 2 o'clock in the morning anyway, <laughs> so <laughs> I figured it doesn't really matter what time of day I record. Plus, I have all of my wonderfully geeky things in the background now because I'm, I'm recording from my, my Sanctum Sanctorum, otherwise known as my room. <laughs> um, yeah. But that's enough of an intro, I think. Let's just get down to it. So, channel talk. Uh, this week, I was surprisingly productive with my recordings. I was not nearly as productive with uh, <laughs> posting things. I was having a lot of trouble uh, getting things to post to YouTube this week. Um, yeah. But... I did get a lot done. Uh, I got chapter three of Detective Grimoire, and that's posted. There's a chapter four. That's <laughs> cut. Oh. Okay, so I get to the end of of chapter three, not knowing that there was going to be a chapter four, but I have ninety percent of the notes, like ninety five percent of the clues, and ninety eight percent of my suspect files completed. There's this little bar over on the side, if you've seen the videos, that like shows how completed all those things are. Literally, all past 90. And I was so sure at the end of that video that we were just going to catch a murderer. I was just like, here's the end. And then, right before I do, I was about to call him out. And then the game is like, chapter 4, the beginning of the end. And I'm just like, oh. So there will be there will be one more Detective Grimoire video coming up uh, probably sometime in the next week, and then what else? I played Enter the Gungeon this week, which um, was surprisingly fun. I said that I didn't expect it to be fun. I just didn't expect to have as much fun with it as I did. Um, I, I just don't play that many shooter games. Like shooter games wouldn't be my first choice. I'm more of an adventure questing kind of person. Um, so I played Enter the Gungeon because it's just a very popular game right now, and I thought it w would be good to play. Um, and I, I mean, I've heard a lot of great things about it, but I, I, I had a surprisingly good time with it. <laughs> um, like, uh, yeah, it, I mean, it's fun. You, you get, like, a whole bunch of different guns, and... As you move through, you start with, like, a pea shooter, and then what did I get? I got a shotgun and something called a jolter, which fired off these, like, streams of of energy. And then I did end up dying on the first boss, though. <laughs> I didn't make it past him. It's this dude called Gatling Gall, and, um, yeah, I did not make it past him. Like, I, I, I put up a good fight. I, I got, like, half of his health bar down, and then, and then I... I I I was backed into a corner, and he shot me a few times, and, and I was done. Um, but no, I'll probably play that some more. Maybe if I get to level 2, I'll make another video. But we'll see. I'll have to get to, to, get to level 2 first before that happens. Um, but no, it was fun. It, it's got that, like, 16-bit quality to it. It's sort of like, like an old Game Boy game, sort of, is kind of what it reminds me of. 
Um, the the music's fun. <laughs> the theme song of it is just like enter the gungeon, enter the gungeon, and that's like the entire theme song to the game, <laughs> which is hilarious and fun. Ah, uh, no, that was good. And then uh, for free to play Friday, I played Relic Hunter Zero, which was I don't know. It was it, it was kind of the same thing to me as Enter the Gungeon. <laughs> But it's older. It was it's uh it was released last year. But um I don't know. I don't know. I didn't like that one as well. It was it was okay. I mean it was free, so no complaints there, but it was colorful and, and it, it sort of had that same like Game Boy quality to it. And there were a couple other things like it wasn't just all shooting. You like hunted relics and things like that. But the problem that I had with it was you start with, uh, like, a basic gun. Um, so my character, I started with something called an elite pistol. And then as you go along, you can pick up other guns, and you can pick up ammo, and you can pick up health and, and uh, grenades that you can lob at the enemies. But the problem was I got to a point where I ran out of ammo for my basic gun. So, like... You can run out of ammo, <laughs> and they give you a ton right off the bat, so I didn't even realize it was something that could run out. And then I got to um, the third stage, the first level of the third stage, and I just ran out. <laughs> and I ran out of ammo on all my guns, and there was no ammo pickups left, and I was out of grenades, and my only choice was to uh, use the melee attack, but the melee attack is awful. It is just the worst and to get close enough to even attack the people like um they instantly drain your shield and then it was like 30 health damage and i only had 140 health so so i died pretty quickly i died pretty quick after i ran out so i mean it, it was okay i see i made it to stage three out of four so i was doing pretty well but then I ran out of ammo, and after that, it was just awful. It was just a mess. Um, yeah, so there was that. And then, what else? I think that was all I played this week. And then and then I made a quick intro video earlier today that I posted to my channel, just talking about like why I started on YouTube and all that good stuff. Um, stuff that's coming up. Um, let me see. Still working on that League of Legends thing. <laughs> the League of Legends thing. I've been promising for like three weeks now. Yeah, that's that's eventually going to happen. I just, I have to find time. Because, ah, mm, they're fun. I like playing League of Legends. But it's like 30 minute matches. And I just have to have the time of day <laughs> to sit down and play. Plus, I'm only level 3 right now. So like, I, I was playing with uh, my friend Nick. Uh, the other day, and he's like level 30, and I was playing against the intro bots, and <laughs> he was just like blazing through them, and I'm just like following in his wake. I, I ended up with what, like 16 assists or something like that? It was pretty bad. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. So, anyway, I have so I have to build on my level on that, I have to work on my level and get experience and. So I can actually play good games. Um, but hopefully I'll be getting one up where I'll be playing with my friend Nick. Um, and also my other friend, uh, Barefoot Ninja. <laughs> oh gosh, it's just such a great name. I had to laugh. But um, yeah, no, hopefully that will happen soon. And then uh, April 30th, which I think, what is today, the 23rd and today's Saturday? So the 30th is next Saturday? Yeah, next Saturday. Next Saturday is um, Tabletop Gaming Day, apparently. I was also informed by this by my friend Nick. Um, apparently, it's Tabletop Gaming Day. So I'll probably sometime this week buy a Tabletop Simulator uh, so I could get out my first video of the Tabletop series um, on the 30th, which will be exciting. I'm excited about that, uh, hopefully. Hopefully we'll have time, and I can get that together, and that'll all work out. And then, of course, uh, Detective Grimoire Chapter 4. And then I'm looking at a few other games. Um, I found one called Flat Kingdom, which looks pretty cool. 
And there's another one called Warden Melody of the Undergrowth, which is also an older game, but it has a like a Nintendo 64 feel to it, which um, I don't know if I ever shared this, but I didn't have a Nintendo 64 growing up, so I am I am intrigued by all Nintendo 64 esque games, even if they weren't Nintendo 64 games, <laughs> because I ha always had to play it vicariously through my friends. So always interested to play Nintendo 64 games. So maybe that. Um, and then, of course, my main series. Um, I still haven't decided between The Witcher and, and Tomb Raider. I'm kind of leaning toward Tomb Raider because I've been sort of taking a poll amongst my friends and Tomb Raider might be the way I'm leaning. Uh, but I could still go Witcher, possibly. Or maybe even Mass Effect because um, I've been told by another friend that Mass Effect is a pretty awesome game, so I might go that way with it. Uh, I haven't decided yet. So, um, there's that. There's all that stuff. Uh, let me see. So I think that's all for, um, for the channel. Yeah, I think that's everything for the channel. So, let's move on to news news. Okay, um, first, PAX East was this week. Uh, for those of you who don't know, although I imagine most of you probably do, or at least might. Um, PAX East is a gaming convention that happens up in Boston, and there's also a PAX South, and I assume there's probably a PAX West and a PAX North, <laughs> because why do two of the cardinal directions when you could have all four? Um, but PAX East was happening this weekend in Boston, which is, again, why I'm recording late, because I was watching the Co-Optional Live podcast from, from there. Um, obviously, I am not there. <laughs> I actually have yet to attend a convention. They always look like a lot of fun, um, but I never really had anyone to go with, and I I don't like going alone to those sorts of things. I mean, they're big and crowded, and, and I would love to go, but I, I want to go with people. So, so um, yeah, I just like going with people. Um, but... A friend of mine was saying that she was going to a con in Columbus, and I may be going to that. Uh, in July, they're having Wizard Con down in Columbus, and amongst other uh, amongst amongst other celebrities who will be there, Jewel Sweet will be there from Firefly, Kaylee from Firefly, and I love Firefly. Firefly is the best. Firefly, Firefly. Ah. So I I might have to go just just to meet just to meet Kaylee and you can buy the photo op and the autograph and I might have to do it guys I might have to do it plus I already happen to have a Gandalf costume <laughs> I do not go to cons but I happen to have a Gandalf costume <laughs> um. Only, only because, only because I have a friend, uh, my best friend, who lives out in Arizona, and I recently surprised her by, by going out and uh, to Arizona, and I was dressed as, as Gandalf, and I was waiting in the dark in a field, because I always joked with her that I would show up one day on her doorstep unexpectedly wearing Gandalf robes and inviting her on an unexpected journey, which is exactly what happened. <laughs> so yeah, I happen to have that. And while I was helping my dad cut down trees today, I found a perfect walking staff. So I'll even have one of those. So yeah, Wizard Con Columbus 2016. Watch out. I am possibly coming for you. <laughs> so maybe that. And then, hey, if any of you guys happen to be in Ohio, or if, yeah, if any of you, if any of you viewers happen to be in Ohio and you would want to meet me for some reason, um, I might be there. I won't have, like, a booth or anything fancy, but you might see me wandering around wearing spectacular flowing wizard robes to Wizard Con. That seems appropriate. Um, yeah, so there's that. And then, uh, what else? Oh! Oh! Mm. Oh. They announced the new Doctor Who companion today. <laughs> And I'm so excited. <laughs> oh, I am such a Doctor Who nerd, as you may be able to tell from my fourth Doctor scarf here in the background, which I made myself. This was actually the reason I learned to knit. 
yeah, I know how to knit, and that's that that thing there is the reason why. <laughs> because not to sound too hipster or anything, but I was into Doctor Who before they really got the merchandising over here in America. So, um, you couldn't just buy the fourth Doctor scarf like you can now at Hot Topic. And <laughs> so, um, the only place I could find it online was from some store in England, and it was in pounds. And I was like, mm. plus it was like 60. It was like 60 pounds, and the pound is more than the dollar. So I was just like, I don't want to really drop 80 bucks on I'm just buying a scarf, and then I'd have to have it shipped over here. And uh, So I learned how to knit, and I made myself this lovely, lovely doctor scarf. And last Halloween, I went to... Um, a party, a silent disco party in an art museum, and it was a costume party because it was Halloween, and I ended up going as the fourth doctor, and it was amazing and spectacular, and I could also cosplay that at Wizard World. That'd be awesome. Go as the doctor. Anyway, anyway, uh, companion, companion. So, uh, Pearl Mackey is her name. I haven't been able to look up a ton because I actually just saw uh, her intro trailer just before I started recording, but I'm super excited because she kind of has that Donna feel for any of you other, uh, Whovians out there. Um, my favorite companion is, uh, most definitely Donna Noble <laughs> because she is, Catherine Tate is just my heart, <laughs> my heart and soul to Catherine Tate because she is just brassy and, and witty and hilarious, and I love her dearly. And um, Pearl Mackey in her trailer kind of has that has that chatty, witty, clever feel that, that Donna had, and I suspect that she'll be very good in the role. Plus, I love Peter Capaldi. I mean, I love all the Doctors. Um, obviously, I love all the Doctors for different reasons. But, um... Peter Capaldi has been just knocking it out of the park, I think, as the Doctor. Because he's just, like, old, but, like, energetic and young. He, he's, like, old and young. And also severe, but also with this wry, dry humor that I enjoy. And, ah, uh, I can't wait until it comes back. Comes back with Pearl Mackey. I'm, I'm very excited for Series 10. Yes? Series 10? I should know, because I'm a fan. <laughs> yeah, series 10. Uh, no, I'm very excited for that. And then, uh, what else? Ah, yes. Shakespeare. I don't know how many of you know, but today, April 23rd, happens to be Shakespeare's birthday. And his death day. Because he was a poet, and I guess he thought it would be clever to be born and die on the same day. <laughs> but it's the 400th anniversary of his death, uh, so I decided on here to um, share a little with you, uh, a little Shakespeare verse, because I am a huge Shakespeare nerd. I happen to have my volumes sitting across the way there. Um, I've been debating all day about which one to do. My preferred would be um, All the World's a Stage. If you happen to check my Facebook page, you will see me in costume as Jaquees, the melancholy fool from As You Like It? Yes, As You Like It. <laughs> there are so many. Um, as You Like It, yes. And he delivers a wonderful speech called The Seven Ages of Man, um, also known as All the World's a Stage, because that's its most famous line, is All the World's a Stage. And all the men and women merely players. They have their exits and their entrances, and one man in his time plays many parts. Um, but, but, that one has kind of a dreary ending, as does To Be or Not To Be, and uh, basically all the speeches. <laughs> I was going to do something for Macbeth. Macbeth is fun. Like, um, hold on, let me see. If it were done when tis done, then twere well it were done quickly. If the assassination but could trammel up the consequence, and catch with his surcease success, that but this blow might be the be-all and the end-all here, but here upon this bank and shoal of time we jump the life to come. Yes. <laughs> Macbeth. And then there's also the Band of Brothers speech from Henry V, in case you didn't know that that was from Shakespeare. Um, he has a speech about Band of Brothers. We, we march as a Band of Brothers. Anyway. Um... 
so I decided to end to end hanging with Janky today with a Shakespearean speech. Let me let me get it here though, because I'm I'm not as familiar with this one. I decided to just go with the comedies. <laughs> Um, from one of my favorite, my first Shakespeare, actually, uh, back in junior high, the first Shakespeare play that I ever, I ever read, um, A Midsummer Night's Dream from the comedies. There's a rather spectacular speech at the end by, uh, Puck, who is the mischievous fairy fool of, of Midsummer Night's Dream. Let me find it here. Is there a table of content? Of course there is. All right. Oh, Much Ado About Nothing. Oh, I should do something from Much Ado About Nothing. <laughs> My dear Lady Disdain, are you yet living? Oh, there's so much good stuff. All of Benedict's. All of Benedict's. Ooh, maybe I'll do that instead. Mm, I might hedge. I might hedge and do Benedict. Let me let me see how long his monologue is, and then and then I'll decide. <laughs> If you're not a Shakespeare nerd, I'm sure you've already left. But <laughs> if you aren't a Shakespeare nerd and still feel like staying, please do. And if you are a Shakespeare nerd, you should still be here because this is good stuff. Uh, let me see. Oh, here's... Oh, that's a Midsummer Night's Dream. Cool. Oh, and here's Much Do About Nothing. Do, 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 do. Act 5, no. I'm looking for Act 3. I know what act it's in. You know, it's actually... It, the one thing that, you know, a lot of people say about Shakespeare is that the language is really hard, which it kind of is. But, I mean, it's actually English. Like, it, not not even, like, Middle English, because Middle English is ridiculous. Um, <laughs> and Old English is just German. <laughs> Middle English is ridiculous. Old English is German. But uh, Shakespeare is early modern English. It's just that a lot of the the words we don't uh, really use anymore. Um, this can be no trick. The conference was sadly born. Oh, that's a pretty long speech, though. Okay, let me just go to Midsummer Night's Dream. Yes, but I love Shakespeare. I have acted in many a Shakespeare show. They're they're a lot of fun to me. I enjoy them. And I shall leave you today on this lovely monologue from Puck, the last line of A Midsummer Night's Dream. The impish fairy Puck addresses the audience and says, If we shadows have offended, think but this, and all is mended, that you have but slumbered here while these visions did appear, and this weak and idle theme no more yielding but a dream. Gentles, do not reprehend. If we, if you pardon, we will mend. And as I am an honest puck, if we have unearned luck now to escape the serpent's tongue, we will make amends ere long, else the puck a liar call. So good night until you all. Give me your hands if we be friends, and Robin shall restore amends. My contribution to Shakespeare 400. Well, that's all I have for tonight, guys. So uh, thanks for tuning in. Thank you for watching all the way to the end, if you have. Check out some of the content I posted this week. Um, ah, yes, check out ATK, uh, which stands for The Amazing Kite, I believe, or Amazing the Kite. Hmm, I don't remember the acronym right now, and I suppose I could look it up, but I don't want to drag things on too long. Um, <laughs> there's a link to to the YouTube channel below. Um, she's one of my Twitter followers, and I'm very excited to promote her channel. Um, so check that out, and please check out my content. I have a lot of good stuff up. Please subscribe, because I love to see those numbers go up and share with your friends. And most importantly, have a wonderful day. This is Janky Shenanigans, signing out. I'm going to have to cut so much of this out. Oh, Manny! Manny, you turned on me so fast. And you can run, you can dodge, you can do whatever. You can do whatever in tactical laser tag, guys. I don't want to end on Kale. I don't want to end on I Hate Kale. Um...
maybe I'll just do this game as a highlight reel. And I think that's all for tonight. So thanks for watching, and I will see you next time.